What will win in a drag race between a Koenigsegg, a Gera RST, a Tesla Model S Plaid, and a Suzuki Hayabusa that has been fitted with a supercharger? Well, I'm going to find out because I'm going to race them over the standing quarter mile because I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. This is going to be amazing! Buy, sell, Car Wow. Okay, let me tell you about this Koenigsegg. It is a very special car. This Agera RST is one of just 25 in the world, and apparently it's the most high-spec version of this car. It even has diamond-encrusted paint. Crazy. However, what's even more crazy are the performance figures. So it's powered by a 5-litre twin-turbo V8 sat just behind me. That thing pushes out 1,360 horsepower and 1,570 newton metres of torque. It's connected to a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox with launch control and it's rear-wheel drive. I'm frightened, especially as this car weighs in at under 1,400 kilos, which means it has a power to weight ratio of one to one. What's really frightening though, is that it costs 3.5 million pounds. That's what it's valued at. I am nervous. If something goes wrong, I'm gonna be in debt for the rest of my life. <gasps> I'm also super excited about finally getting to drive a Koenigsegg, especially this car, because it's actually set the top speed record here for a production car in the UK on this very runway. It did 242 miles an hour, though the actual top speed that this car is capable of is 277 miles an hour. It is mental, but so too is the motorbike we've got over there. It's a Suzuki Hayabusa. However, the owner, Richard, has added a supercharger to its 1.3-litre four-cylinder engine. As a result, that thing puts out 380 horsepower and 280 newton metres of torque. Obviously, it's rear-wheel drive, but it's got a manual gearbox, motorcycle gearbox, just straight up and down. The power-to-weight ratio is impressive, though. The thing weighs 250 kilos, so it has more than a one-to-one -one power to weight ratio though owner Richard has reduced it slightly to a bit less because he weighs 100 kilos so got 380 horsepower 350 kilos still more than one to one power to weight ratio which beats this car it's also a lot less expensive the bike's worth 50,000 pounds. Now we come to the vehicle with the worst power to weight ratio. It is the Tesla Model S Plaid. So it has three electric motors and combined they put out 1,020 horsepower and 1,420 newton meters of torque. The car weighs in at 2.2 tons. So it has below a 1.2 power to weight ratio. Still, that thing provides its power instantly. It's a nutcase off the line. Also, it's being driven by someone who's very good at launching cars. It's Yanni. Hey Yanni, how are you? I'm really good and I've got a fantastic view to my left and to my right, wow. Yeah, what's going to be interesting is how long that view remains there once we launch these cars. Will it drop behind you or will it go ahead? Ahead of you. I can't see how either of you can get a better start than me. It's not possible. I really don't think anyone's going to get a better start than you. It's whether we can pull it back. That's the question because that thing is super quick off the line. We know that. This has all the power. The bike has all the power. It's just whether they can put that power down to the runway. That is my concern. I need to see that, that, um, What's the thing called in the corner? The, um, the bike thing. Uh, cone. I need to see the cone. I just had a total mind blank. Red and white thing that warns you of things on the road. Yeah, it's called a cone. And what you've got next to you is a cone egg seg. Ooh. Okay, you got it? Genius. Mate, that was really good. I'm very impressed with that. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. That wasn't planned or scripted. We don't plan or script anything. That gives the editors a hard time though, it does. Anyhow, I want to say a huge thank you to Richard for bringing that bike along. I want to say a huge thank you to AA Wireless, who have driven all the way from Holland to bring us that Tesla Model S Plaid. FYI, if you want to know what AA Wireless do, well, what they have created is a special thing that you can actually turn your wired Android Auto in your car to wireless. So if your car doesn't have wireless Android Auto in it, but it has just normal wired, you can then have wireless. 
Brilliant. There's a link to them in the description. Also, huge, huge thanks to Tom at Wham Barn for lending us his Koenigsegg. Click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below to go check out Tom's channel and see all the crazy stuff he does and find out how he manages to afford a car like this and why he'd bother lending it to an idiot like me. Go check him out. Also a link to his channel in the description. Anyway, before we start, we're gonna do the customary car wow sound check. So I'm gonna start off by revving up this Koenigsegg. That is pretty frightening. It's like an absolute monster sat behind me, just growling. Rich, can you rev up your bike? Yeah, that's nice, that's nice. Obviously, Yanni, you're in the electric car and it doesn't make a noise. behind the front bumper, but we're not going to mess about with that. Instead, we're going to get you to make some car-related oh, noises man. of your choice. Make Why? sure you do it the radio so me and Richard can laugh at you. Go ahead. Why? Just why? That was actually really good. You've been practising that. I think I hurt my throat a little bit. I got... <laughs> I can have some water, please, to car number two. Anyway, we're going to get on with the race now, but before we do, if you haven't subscribed to CarWow already, make sure you do right now. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the bell icon because we've got some more races with this Koenigsegg, and we've got some really real special races coming up with even madder cars. Finally, let's race. Three, two, one. Come on. Where's the cone? Oh my god, that was quick. That was close between you and the bike. I wasn't even in that. Wow! Wow! Oh my god! And I was just looking at the bike and he was like, looked like he was coming a bit close to me, his front wheel was coming up. Mate, I'm buzzing. That was mad. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Yeah, I need to. I've got traction control on this because I just then like get it wrong. I know it's gonna light up its tires if I don't have it on. When it's on boost and it's going, my God, this pulls, and I would reel you back in, but it's just too late. That has gone. That has just disappeared. I think if we we're on a drag strip, super hot tires, be different. But oh, let me just have a quick word with Richard. How was that for you? That was fine. Yeah, I was, um, I was a little bit premature, I think. Really? Off the line? Yeah. Did you win? Yeah. You won? Yeah. Woo! Let's just do a Stuart's inquiry. Very honest or very stupid of you to actually acknowledge that. Stuart, can we just check whether the bike jumped the start, please? Yes, yes, the bike did jump slightly. Richard! You jumped! I thought I did. <laughs> I was a little bit premature. That's one nil to me, then. No, we're going to run again. So then, Yanni, that is your first launch in a Model S Plaid, isn't it? I've literally just come back down to like a normal level. I don't think I've ever experienced anything like that. Am I missing something, Matt? Have we ever driven anything faster like the launch than this? No, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, I have. If you want to see what that car is, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. But I'm glad that you continued with your sentence and said back down after your first word, otherwise that could have been a bit rude. Pause. <laughs> anyway, hopefully Richard will not be jumping this start so we can get a proper race and I get a better launch out of this Koenigsegg. Come on, Egg. Be a good Egg. Three. Come on. away <laughs> you did it again Yanni mm -mm -mm. 
Hey! I know this thing is a lot faster than that. It's just not quite hooking on the launch. Oh, let me have a quick word with Richard because I think you did him as well. Your launch, was it as good as the first time? The launch was as good, but I was slow off the line. So you need to get that happy balance between not jumping and not going to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's give it another go because it's always best two out of three. We can ignore the first race because it was your first go at Carwell Drag Race. So Yanni, that's one nil to you. Okay, we're discounting the first race because Richard has never done a Carwell Drag Race before. So what are you saying? Are we doing it again? Exactly, best two out of three. Oh baby, I'll do this all day long. Let go. Yanni, did you win? So I'll take that as a 2-0 to me. So Richard, how was it for you? Good run. But you lost. No. You won? Yeah. Yanni, Richard seems to think he won. No way. No way at all. Wow, you, you really think you won? I think I won. OK, Yanni, um, I want you then to just be so confident that if he won... He wins, so not best two out of three, he wins overall. But if you won, obviously it's two out of three and you won. But it'll show how confident you are in what you're saying. Do you want to risk it? Risk it all day. He didn't beat me. Like, he didn't, no, he didn't beat me. Risk it for a chocolate biscuit. He didn't beat me. I won. That's his decision. Let's find out. So then, what exactly happened? Well, it appears that Yanni should not have gambled because a Suzuki actually won. It completed the standing quarter mile in 9.7 seconds. The Tesla was second with a time of 9.8 seconds and the Koenigsegg last. It crossed the line in 10.4 seconds. Just so you know, the Koenigsegg was running on a mix of super inladed and E85 fuel, so it wasn't at full horsepower and was most likely putting out about 1,250 horsepower. Though this won't have affected its quarter mile time much as traction, not power, was the issue. Now we're going to have a rolling race from 50 miles an hour in second gear. Obviously the Tesla has no gears and the bike's in second gear. Here we go, let's get up to 50. To the half mile, three, two, one, go. Won that. <laughs> Bye, <then. laughs> you did. I will say my defence. Once I hit 165 miles an hour, it stops me. I have no idea what happened at all. It was just intense. What happened to the bike? That's what I want to know. It went so fast, an air vent fell out. Look. I thought you'd gone, and then you slowed down, and then you went. <laughs> oh, so you're blaming me? Yeah. OK, did you hear that, Matt? What was that, Rich? Has it got an excuse? Staying level with me, and obviously you... I could hear you talking to you, like, let's get to 50. So obviously I slowed, then I accelerated with you. So he slowed. By the time I slowed and accelerated, he obviously missed the acceleration bit. That's his excuse. He's not that close, Matt. Easy. Your pants. Okay, three and a half million. Is it better for me to my pants and play it safe or let him accidentally reverse in the bike? He could have fit in a bus in between the bike and the car. He was nowhere near you. But I wasn't sure whether he was or wasn't, and I wasn't sure whether he'd seen it. So, in the interest of safety, is it not better to play it safe? Or shall I gamble and say I won when I didn't and in fact lose everything? I think. Um... Mr. Bike Rider can see how big his bike is and knows. Well, oh, easy, Kevin, don't hit my bike. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, it wouldn't have been funny if he hadn't seen it and he crashed into the car. I like to take care of people's cars and just be doubly hey, sure. Walking, what are we doing? No, don't leave us. It's over, come on, let's go back. They may laugh all they want to, but I was looking after Tom's car. Right, you see how the tarmac changes? Yeah. So that's where you break. And you're going to be on this side because we, we reverse it. Right. So I'll still be in the middle. Matt will be that side. You'll be this side. Yeah. I don't know if you're going to do it at 100 mile an hour, what he normally does usually. Yeah. Just stay in line with me. So whatever speed I'm doing, reaching this point, the minute you hit this cross, break. Yeah. But you want to be as close as, you want close to be as, as close as you can. It doesn't matter how to be exact, but as close as you can. But the minute you hit it, yeah. we see who breaks best. A few moments later. He didn't say which direction. He didn't. No. So we're going that way and breaking. You haven't told him which direction, Yanni. <laughs> That could have been an interesting brake test. And you expect me to rely on you for safety ideas? I told him to follow me up. I didn't know. Anyway, so you're braking at the line. Yeah. Yeah, Annie. Wait a second, what's going on here? Is my door not shut? Matthew, both of us a pair of idiots. Did you know, Matt, that this car only does 15 miles per hour in reverse? I didn't know that. Thank you for that enlightenment. That is the only stat that you've ever actually offered up of your own accord. You are very welcome, young Matthew, very welcome. Let's do the brake test. Okay, so like the man said, we have a brake test from 100 miles an hour. When we reach the line, full emergency stop. Vehicle stop in the shortest distance does win. Come on, everybody, get level. If you'd rather watch another drag race, something crazy, click up there. If not, stay here for the brake test. Here comes the line. Yeah, he's looking back at us. And Yanni, you didn't do too badly then. It's all about the lead foot. Not bad considering this car goes so fast, the braking wasn't too bad. Yeah, it's all right for one brake. The brakes soon go off though. If you brake and brake and brake and brake, then they can overheat. You have to get special performance brake upgrade thingamajig if you want to do like track work with that car. How do you feel about Richard's braking? Not so good, is it? To be fair, he's on two wheels. You want to make sure you don't fall off. Front brake, you're just twisting the front wheel. Rear brake, you're skidding it. How was that for you? Slow. <laughs> Worked well. That's what it is. What, was it scary? No. Give it full brakes? Yeah, yeah, it was squealing. Front brake was squealing. Really? Yeah. But it's got ABS, so it's, I just anchored on as hard as I could. Just driving around in circles. Story of my life. How was that? Really good. I enjoyed this. This is one of the most enjoyable races. This car is, is insane. You've had an electric car before, a Porsche Taycan Turbo S. Did that impress you more? Yes. Would you ever consider having one of those as an alternative daily car? 100% no. <laughs> I don't think it's 100% yes. Why? It's boring. Boring. That's it. One word. Boring. Uh, this is not. This is mental. Obviously, it's a little bit, little bit more expensive. It's a little bit more expensive. This thing is absolutely mental. I think blue's your colour, mate. Blue, yep. Yeah. Car wear blue. Yeah, look, I'm in blue. I'm matching the car. One last thing to do. This is the owner, Tom. Hiya. So, big thanks to Tom here for lending us his car. Make sure you follow the link in the description to go follow him on his channel. What is it? Wham Barn or Wham Dot Barn. Wham Dot Barn. Okay, go check it out. Links in the description. More on this car, more on some of the other crazy cars he's got. And if you go follow him over there, he's going to let us drag race this again against some other cars in future. So make sure you go to his channel and follow him there, okay? Because he'll help us out. Anyway, hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think is the best vehicle. In fact, no, vote in the pinned comment. Was I right to panic and honk the horn to prevent a potential accident with Tom's rather expensive car or not? Vote in the pinned comment, or maybe I was just a big wimp. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to get a car way to silly car the easy way. Just upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Easy. Thanks for watching.